Okay, uh, we are back and let's continue. I added some notes. I think it was after the video. Uh, I stopped the previous video. I added some notes here on the on in the readme file, uh, primarily to explain also to myself and to yourself to you what uh, stuff, uh, what content we had in this uh, part of the course. And I added this word refactoring code, and I don't think that I mentioned it neither today nor earlier. Maybe, maybe earlier I did. Yeah. Um, so what is refactoring? Um, I would need to e explain uh, because I did it, but I didn't say that I did it. Refactoring is the word used by programmers uh, to, to the action when we make some changes to a code, but only to improve the code itself, not the features. Okay. So the basic thing is that you, let's say you wrote some code, it works perfectly, does everything what you want. And then you read the code again and you notice that you have variable names called data, data one, data two, temp, temp one, temp two, okay? Which, ha which are basically totally meaningless. And then you decide, decide to rename one of the variables to uh, be called something that is actually meaningful. And this is called refactoring because it doesn't it shouldn't change the behavior of the program not improve it not uh, deteriorate re deteriorate it make it worse uh nothing it, it should only improve the readability and maintainability of the code and this is again something that uh, unfortunately way too few people in the industry uh, do uh, partially because there is this idea of uh, it works, don't touch it. Um, but uh, it also it's also because they lack the testing that we learned. Okay, so we learned how to run tests, and in, unfortunately, in this specific case, in this specific one that we are uh, looking at, uh, we don't have tests. But uh, um, in other cases, we have tests, and uh, the reason people fear, the reason many people don't do this refactoring, don't do the improvement of code, is because they fear that the changes may uh, break something. And uh, they are fear rightfully. Any change can break something, even if I just rename a variable, if I make some typo, or whatever can happen. The best way to make sure that such things don't break my code is to have a lot of tests that can verify the code and then I can run it before, everything works, nice, I make a little change, running the tests again, if the tests pass, then if I had enough tests, then I can be um, reasonably sure that I don't didn't break anything, okay? It's not 100% perfect, of course, never, it can never be, but uh, if you can rely on your tests, that's that's just great, okay? Um, and uh, I know I personally write lots of lots of tests in all of my, uh, uh, all of everything I, I write because I know that it's it makes me much calmer when I'm writing code, I, I'm much less worried. And so I can make progress much faster. Unfortunately, industry, this is not, uh, that an that's that much an established practice uh, because the pressure of the developing and and whatever uh, I think uh, the reality is that probably the best sort of companies do have this uh, do practice refactoring uh, quite often um, but many don't so that's what we did when we um, I'm not sure even if I can call it refactoring when we when we made this uh, improvement because they also improved the the features of 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 the of the pro program. Um, okay, so the thing that I wanted to do now is introduce this ArcParse library, uh, and uh, as I told you, as I showed you, uh, we have a problem. We were going to have a problem as we add more and more of these. Uh, parameters and especially the optional parameters, this is going to be difficult to 
uh, handwrite uh, myself. So this library, the R parse, uh, let me show you. It allows me to define, okay, here it is. I have some definition, okay, of what parameters I'm expecting I'm expecting from the user. And then it can parse all, parse all the command line and verify uh, that you indeed received those parameters and it can set the default values and so on. So in this case, in this example that you can see in the slides, uh, we define, basically we set up the definition. We say that uh, we get two parameters. One of them is called input. The other one is called output. Uh, the input one is actually a required parameter. The output one is the output is not a required parameter. And uh, but when you run the program without any parameters, uh, or when you ask for help, it will uh, print out this description. Let, let's try to run this program. So I switch to the terminal, uh, wrong key. I go to the work slides example, Python examples arc parse. This is the folder. Let me check it. Yeah, it's examples arc parse and then arc parse two file names. Actually, I can you can even see here, but let's run this. So I run Python. It's called arc parse, arc parse two file names. Okay, so I run the program and it complains that I don't have Python. Okay, source uh, van bin activate. I just turn it on. Let me run it again. So this is what I get when I run the program. What does it say? And it, it I didn't have to add anything to the program to print this out. You remember we, in, let me just switch back. We had this code we had this code that would check the number of parameters and would tell me how to run the program. And I had to write this as well. Uh, in the example that I have now, let me show this one. I'm opening it as the editor as well. I didn't have to do that. I didn't write it. This library, this RPARS library, provides that basically called help menu or help output uh, just because I set up the uh, require the, the parameters. So let me run this again. No, I don't even have to run it. it. It's here. So it says usage, okay, name of the file. Uh, in square brackets, minus A means that this is an optional parameter. I didn't describe it, okay? I didn't add it. This was added by the library, and it will allow me to get help. It also says that I am expected to write minus minus input and this value called input. And then again in square brackets, it says minus minus output output. It's square brackets means meaning that it's optional. And it says that I if, if I do provide something, then I can provide this name and the, the, the value. Now this is slightly different from, from what we used earlier. Because earlier we said, okay, name of the program and then three parameters or maybe four parameters just there without this minus minus thingy. So let me explain that. But before I do explain, let me try this minus H. So if I run this with minus H, then it doesn't, okay, sorry. I ran the Vim with the minus H instead of the program minus h. So let me run this program first and then with minus h. So now with the minus h I get help. I get a, a nicer explanation of this one usage uh, the same line. Okay. And then it says the options. It can be either minus h or minus minus help. Okay. So both could work not just the minus h. I could also say minus minus help and I would get the same output. And here it says the input uh, parameter and the output parameter. And here is the description I added. So if I switch back to the sl slide, uh, you can see that this is the help. Okay, so it printed out the help. So you can add to each of these argument definition some help that will really help, help the user okay, understand what uh, this parameter is for. 
So what is this minus minus thing? Actually, let me try to see if I can show, have a different, now, no, I don't have that, that example, but um, I will, I will, will, will add that example. So the parameters that you provide on the command line can basically have two major ways of providing parameters. One of them is called positional parameters. So the location of the parameter matters. Is it the first, the second, the third parameter or named parameters where each parameter has a name and the location doesn't matter, but the name has to be, become before the actual value. And in our original script, so if I switch back this one, okay, the one that we were, and everything basically we learned so far, these are all positional parameters. And here we said, okay, the first one must be the database, then the term, and then the number, and then the download folder. So we know the exact position. And it has a huge limitation, this way of, of providing, because especially when we need to have two uh, parameters that can be optional, okay, then we don't know which optional we got. Right. If you get one option, one value there, we don't know which one we got because it's the last element, last parameter, uh, but we don't know which one. Uh, so that's a huge limitation. In addition, the fact that we have to provide them in in a, in in the right order means that we probably will have to remember that order. Well, it, the the program can pin, print to us, but uh, many times we will just type in the the command and provide the parameters uh, without looking at the the and remind ourselves the actually order of the parameters and we sometimes will will make a mistake uh, so it's more flexible if we, each parameter is actually named okay so you have a prefix it, you have to type in more because you also have to type in the name of course that's the drawback of it but it means that you can give them in any order, okay? Um, and we'll see both uh, ways. So first, so this is basically what, what you saw, that this is the basic, uh, one of the basic uses of this arc parse. Now let me try to implement first uh, this arc parser to behave exactly the same way uh, as we had here. So instead of this, now we won't need we won't uh, need this. So we'll need instead of that. I'm going to put in this one, import arc parse. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. This comes to the beginning somewhere. Okay, actually I can put it on the first one because it starts with the letter A. Then this line creates the argument parser, and this is. Uh, this RV. So this comes here. And this is how we define one parameter. Okay, I'm going to edit this soon. And this is how we actually tell it to now go ahead and parse them. Parse whatever it com comes on the command line. So it what it does, it actually goes through the content of this sysrv. I won't need to deal with the sysrv anymore. This library is going to do this all the work. And here I'm going to tell it that the first, it, I'm going to remove the minus minus now because uh, it's uh, these are uh, positional parameters and then I don't provide this minus minus uh, thing here. So the first thing is the database, database. And I don't even need to provide here the field required because all the positional parameters I by default required. So let me actually do this. I comment out all the rest of the code on the, of the main. Okay, it's a little bit too much, but I comment it out. Okay. And I just have this. So we can see how it works, okay? We set up the parser, we call, add this database as a field and call the arcs, uh, the parse arcs. Let me run this. Python, 
NCBI pi. So I read it and it immediately tells me I need uh, it. I need to provide this database. Now remember, this is because I uh, had I didn't put the minus minus there, uh, and it says okay, I, I need to provide something which called a database. Uh, I it, it also tells me I can use this minus h, so I put the minus h, and here it is. It says positional arguments. Okay. But I need more, so I need also the term. Okay. And I also need the number. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I should have shown you a little bit more, a few more problems. So now if I run this minus h, it tells me I need all these parameters. Fine. And in our case, we also have an optional one, right? Uh, the download folder. So this is now the download folder, the last one. Download folder. And this is going to be required equals to false. Let's see how it works. Re required. Hope I typed it correctly. Mm, no, uh, um, required is an invalid argument for positions. Ah, okay. So I can't tell it that it won't be required. Optional. I don't think that it, it should be true, but I, I don't think that it... Okay, unexpected keyword arguments. So earlier I got that required is invalid argument for positionals. Fine, okay. And I thought that, okay, I can cheat and use uh, the word optional, but optional doesn't even exist there. Okay, so nice. We won't be able to implement what I wanted using this way of a positional uh, parameter. It's fine, we'll deal with this. Um, what I would actually like one... No, it's okay, fine. Um, so this parsed the arguments. Uh, and as you see, so it, uh, we didn't see that it exited. Okay. So we also would like to pr print, provide this database nucleotide protein, right? So we can take this line, this extra, and add it to the help database. And we can add it to the help equal to, and I paste it here. Let me save it, okay? Now, if I run a, my, my H, as it, then it will tell me that this should these are the values. I can't even remove this uh, this thing here because it's so it's now obvious that these are the, the the values. So I can remove this this thing here, and I run it again, and uh, and this this is what I got. Now I can also add help for the others. Uh, and see what it does. Uh, if I run this, this is what I get. Okay, fine. How can I now get out from this the actual database term and number? So I'm going to copy uh, them here for now. So the database is going to be I have this variable now called args, which is a totally arbitrary name. But I can use it now and say args dot database, database. Why is it database? Because here it, I call it database. So this args object has a field called the database now. Term, args dot term, number, arcs, huh, I need to say arcs, arcs number, and I need to convert it into integer. And this one, the download folder, well, for now, I, I will just set it to downloads, okay, because we'll need to fix that. And I can enable the rest of them here, okay, rest of the code I can enable. Okay, the rest of this code is the same. The only thing I replaced 
are these rows, okay? And uh, this is how I got the, the values. Now, I don't really need these variables. I didn't need them earlier either, right? I could have just passed the arg, sys argv. So the database is passed here. I could have put here sys argv uh, and uh, be done with it. And uh, I don't really need these variable names here. I don't need them here either, but as we were using them, let's go uh, and, and this. Uh, and keep this. So let's see if this works. Python, NCBI, Py. Okay, database, uh, protein, uh, term, turtle. I'm going to run out of animals, number two. Okay, downloads. Looks like we got two turtles. So this was uh, some improvement. Now uh, you might say, okay, I, I have this, actually I even have more lines of code because I have to define them first and then I have to copy them. And here I, I only had to copy. So what's, what's the story? And right, uh, because we are at the sort of the beginning of this and we don't only have like three, four parameters, it's still not clear that you would actually gain from this. How, however, you already can, might see that um, because it's more well-defined, uh, it can be cleaner uh, code. But let's try to add this download uh, folder now. And can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, obviously. I'm just- um, What, de what determines the order of the argument, like the order you wrote it in the code? The first one needs to be database, the second one term, the third one number, because it's in this order in the code. So so this one here, here I don't need to put them in any order any, anymore. Okay. I mean, even here, I, I, I wouldn't need to put, the, I could put, I could, could have written this one, right? But here I actually put the number, so, right? So it, it doesn't matter uh, how, which order you, you Put. Here, it, it also doesn't matter the order because all of them have names already. Oh, but, right. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Okay, the place yeah. where it matters the order is the user uh, as it provides the, the values, okay? Okay, so I, can, yeah. I can't say two turtle because it will say, oh, 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 oh it, it will say the turtle can't convert to number. Yeah, okay. Thank okay. You. Um. Uh, okay, so now I would like to inter. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, just please ask ask questions. That's the that's the fun part of it. Okay, um, so I would like to add now this download folder as a, um, an optional parameter. But apparently, I can't do this with positionals, so I want I need to use the named ones which are looking like this. I need to provide minus minus and some name. Now, I don't know if the download underscore folder is a good name here, but let's try to go with it for now. I run it this way. It's an error, of course, because I'm missing the values. Um, okay, I can try to do this. Now let's, if I run the, what else do I have? Uh, I ran out of the snakes, okay? Okay, you see, I kept typing in the wrong direction. Okay, so now I put the snake. Okay, so I, I got downloaded two snakes. What if um, elephant? But I put in uh, in this folder. LF. Okay, how do this? So now I, I forgot, right? I forgot that it's not uh, the force parameter anymore. Uh, so it's complaining uh, about something, unrecognized argument. Okay, so uh, it shouldn't be the force part. It's not the force parameter, it's the parameter that has a name download folder. Right. This is how I provide it, and, and but I won't run it now. Well, I, I can run it. 
Okay, it won't work properly. Okay, so it still puts it in the downloads folder, the elephants. Why? Uh, because here I didn't change it. Okay, I just used uh, downloads. So I need to put here now the arcs, arcs, download folder. So, but what are, what are we going to do with these downloads, these downloads? So I could use the same code as here, saying if this download folder in arcs exists, let's actually do this. Arcs download, if arcs download folder, else downloads. Let me see if this works. Okay, now I provide this uh, download folder and it, it, it apparently it puts there. And if I don't provide the download folder and I don't care now that it's overriding, okay? Then it puts in the downloads, okay? I won't look at the, where it actually created the folder. I can see the, uh, the output here, okay? So now it works. Uh, and I'm going to comment this out because I don't like this solution. Okay, but I would like to keep it for you. Instead of that, I just use, would like to use this one. Okay, so how can I do this? I can here say, I think I, this is the way, comma, and default downloads. Okay, so I think now it will say that this is the default value of this. Uh, Parameter. Let me run this. If I run it without anything. Yes, it's downloading to the downloads folder. And if I say LF, because I'm too, no, sorry, not this way, again, this way. So I say download folder LF, because I'm too lazy to type in elephant. Okay, then it puts in the, in that folder. Okay, so now instead of having this code, I can, I put the default here. And the nice part is now that if I run this Python NCBI thingy, uh, this doesn't show, but if I show it with the minus H, uh, okay, it doesn't show the default value. Hmm. Minus minus help. Okay, I'm disappointed. I thought I'm going to see the default value here, uh, but I don't. I won't wonder why. But anyway, this is this way. I can uh, explicitly say that this is the default value. I don't need to have extra code um, uh, for this, which is in my opinion, way cleaner, especially again, when you start getting more of these uh, parameters. So this way I, I basically replicated what I had uh, here earlier uh, with about the same amount of uh, lines of code uh, with slightly cleaner. Now, let me show you one more problem with the original code. So I'm going to comment out for, for a short period of time, the new code we added and allow you and enable the old code we had and try to run this program again with the default value elephant. But now, so this one, this works, okay? This is supposed to work, put it in the download folder, fine. What if I put here the text too? Well, we got an exception here, right? We got an exception from Python which is not nice. Users don't want to see exceptions because they will think that your code has a problem. And you don't want that either. You would like to make sure that the user knows that the user made an error and typing in the, letter, the text too instead of a number. So you this, this part, this converting to integer has to be improved uh, to make sure that uh, if the user didn't provide something that can be converted to integer, then it will complain properly. And I won't want to implement, I mean, you can do it with, with try except, you can do it all kinds of other ways, fine. 
But let me get back to the, to our, our, the our new solution. So in new solution, okay, we have the same problem, okay? The problem is the same, okay? So far, haven't solved it. But here, and I have to cheat again because I don't remember uh, this one. Uh, this one, okay? This is in the slide. I can tell it, uh, wrong key, sorry, showing the source code of the source code, copy. I can even type it in. So I can say that the type of this value is int. Okay, let's happen. What happens? What happens now? I run it with two, and it will tell me. So the arc parse now will recognize that this is not a number, not an integer. Sorry, <laughs> and it will tell you argument invalid int value. Okay. Um, if what if I put two point three? Still invalid value. Two. Now it works. So. Something that we didn't have in the previous uh, code, we didn't have it implemented. Uh, we could have, okay, um, but we didn't we didn't have. Now we can uh, implement it very easily by telling our parser that this is expected to be an integer. Not only that, actually, I don't need this int anymore. Why don't I need? Let's try to see it, because. It's not only that R parse checks whether it's an integer, it already converts it into an integer. So this arcs.number is now already an integer. So now it's even nicer. What else should I show here? Okay, let's show another uh, optional parameter. I mentioned you, any questions, by the way, just let me put it out. So I mentioned you that uh, I would like, uh, maybe I would like this, these print statements to be controllable, whether I would like to see them or not. I mean, it was, it's really nice that I run this program and it pro tells me what it's doing, fine. But uh, in some environments, maybe you don't want to see any of this progress, okay? On the other hand, in some way, some uh, programs, you might say, I normally I don't want to see anything, but maybe I would like to see some of this uh, progress being printed. So maybe the default should be nothing, and then the user tells can tell me, show me more, or the user the default can be oh, print out the progress, uh, and then you can tell you don't, okay? Just be silent. So let's go with this way now, uh, because this was the, this is the code. So let's say that we would like to allow the user to tell the program to be quiet. How can we do this? Well, this is an optional parameter. So I just copy paste it and let's call it quiet. Uh, and I, the default is, uh, yeah, so th this is it. This is it? No. I need to say store true. Okay, so let's, let's, before I do that, let's explain a little bit. So now I have this quiet thing. If I run the program with, with help, it will tell me that it expects this minus minus quiet and to get some value uh, did i type it correctly uh, i think uh, uh, that it expects a value here and so some people will say okay the value should be either the word true or the value the word false uh, to say quiet true or quiet false but that actually is not the proper way to handle this the proper way is to say that if this quiet flag is not there, then it then we assume that it's false. And if the minus 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 quiet is there without any value, then we assume it to be true. We don't need this extra 
thing here because the only two values of this quiet can be either true or false. So I protect it. I I I I I quiet. Okay. No, no, this silent. How do okay? I know how, I don't know how to write quiet. Okay. And I'm going to change it to silent because I'm now not sure that I write it, wrote it correctly. Um, anyway, this parameter, action store true, will tell the R parser that instead of expecting a value, just store whether the value is true or false. Why is it called action store true? I have no idea. Probably historical reasons. I don't really care. I read it in the documentation. No? Okay, so that's that's it. So let's try to see what the H says. So now the H, the minus H says, instead of quiet and quiet, it just says, okay, just provide this, this, this word. So if I, okay, fine, the user will provide this word or not. What are we going to do with it? So here we can say, where is the print statement? The first one. If arcs quiet, let's do it silent because I'm getting silent. Where else do we have quiet? Quiet. We don't have it. Okay, silent. Let's do it with silent. If silent, actually, well, no, what we would like to, it's not that if silent, then print. What we would say, if not silent, then print. Okay, so I'll do the, with the rest of them as well, but for now, let's see it. So if I run the program now, with just protein, elephant, and two, it will print out the same thing, the search and CBI and so on. But if I also pro provide Silent, okay. Silent. Sorry. Let me clear this. Silent. If I also provide silent, then it didn't print out the, that first line, only the download the files and so on. So this worked, okay. This only printed out now when... Uh, it, so if, if we provide the silent flag, it's not uh, printing this. And now we can add this to every print statement. Print here too. I'm going to add it. If print and uh, this one as well. I can I can actually put this whole thing here. Okay. So let's run it. Silent and down load folder A, just so we can see. Okay, so there's nothing is printed out to the screen, but the download folder has the two elephants. And I can, the nice thing is now that I can put these in different order. So silent, let's call it B. Oh, sorry. So what happened now is that I provided the B after the silent word, even though uh, the, the name, but I, it, it needs to be the value immediately after the download folder because that's the value of the, that field. Okay, so now it works. But as you can see, I can put the silent and the download folder with a value, this order or the other order, because, because they are named and the name is what important, not the location. So now in the B folder, I also have two elephants. Okay. I could also say, oh, I, I, I can give hello the minus S. So here, if you would like to have the lazy people, okay, like myself, who don't want to type in silent, you can also tell it minus S. And now, first of all, Python, ncbi pi minus h, it will tell you that you can use either silent or minus s. 
So I'm doing this with the minus S and it does the same. Okay. What is the story about this minus and minus uh, uh, S? It's uh, basically the standard uh, that uh, you can have uh, parameters which are either short parameters, one letter parameters, and then you put a single dash in front of them, or you might uh, have longer parameter names and then you put two dashes in front of them. That's sort of the standard. Um, okay. So far, these three are still uh, required and positional. Uh, and still we don't uh, check the, the value of nucleotide and protein and the value of the database. But um, okay. What if you would like to make this, um, I don't know, the number, let's say, default to one, okay? First of all, you could put, say here, okay, default to one. But if you already have a default, then it also means that we don't really need it. So we can make it optional. Uh, but as you might remember, you can't do that with positionals. So let's make it also, um, before that, let me just save this. Okay, I just have this one in a comment. So you will have this in the uh, in the example. So now I put it two minus signs. And by this, I converted the positional argument into a um, named uh, argument. So again, Python and CPI, pi. Okay, it tells me with, with an I minus h, it's better. So now it tells me these are the positional arguments, it even explains me, and these are the options. Okay, now I can run this program with, let's use the C folder now. So if I don't provide the number, then it will download one. This is the C folder, and I have one elephant there. And if I provide, and now I can provide it anywhere, I can provide number three, and let's call put this in the D folder, okay? So now what I, I there we have the two positional, the protein, so the database and the term, and we have then three positional, three uh, named parameters in any order you like, okay? Because what, what only matters is the name and the value immediately after it. Okay, so those, those need to be in pairs or a, a, a parameter name that doesn't have a value because it's either true or false. Okay, and now let's see the, in the D folder, we have three elephants. Okay, so we could make the, do this as well. And what else? That's it, I think. I mean, you can go over the slides and see a lot, a lot of more, a lot more examples for uh, how to, uh, how flexible this R parse is. But you can see that uh, I didn't have to add any more code, really. I just added more definitions for this R parse, and then suddenly I got all kind of new features uh, for this program. Um, yeah. Any questions here? Okay, let's make this also a uh, named parameter, but uh, this must be required, right? Because we can't run with, without a term. We can't say, okay, we default to elephant. I mean, we could, but let's, we, we, let's say we don't want. So if I run the program, first of all, we don't have the term anymore. But if I run this program, it will probably complain an error occurred, empty term and query key, nothing to do. Okay, so this is the, this is fine. Uh, but I could, could come here and say, okay, required equal to true. Let's see if that works. Okay, so now instead of the, of the, BioPython li uh, library complaining that it can't work without a term. 
Instead of that, the arc parse already notices that there is an argu uh, the required ar argument called term, and, and I should provide it. And I can provide it, let's say, at the end, call it cat, and let's call the name of the folder also cat, and I'm going to get three cats now in the folder, which is called cat, and everything is silent. So I have a cat folder, and let's do this now without being silent, and let's call the folder cat2, just so it will be a separate one. Okay, and you can see now it already printed that it's uh, it put it in the cat2 uh, uh, folder. Okay, and this way I could also put the database as a, a named parameter, a named and a required parameter, so it's still required, but now it's named, meaning that I can put it anywhere, okay, in any in any order, and it's more flexible in general. Any questions with this topic? Okay. Here you can. Here you have. I'm going over the slides now, trying to look for something that might be further interesting. But so far, I think I covered most of them. Yeah. This one allows you to provide, to have a, a, more than one positional arguments with the same name. So in this case, uh, we wanted to have files and uh, the plus says one or more. So the, here you can say Python, name of the program, and then you can put one or more files there. Okay. You can have multi-level of these arguments saying if that the, if, if the user provided this argument then do this if the user provided that argument then provide do that uh, sorry wrong explanation the, what i wanted to do what i wanted to explain is that if the user provides this argument then these are the additional arguments we are expecting and if the user provided that argument then these are the other totally different parameters that we are expecting okay so uh, you can have very complex uh, arguments there. And actually, I just thought about one more thing I wanted to show you. And here is going to uh, somewhere. I'm trying to find where it is. Boolean flex. So not this one. Short names. Ex exclusive. This one. Mutually exclusive. Only one. Exactly one. Oh, so... Let me go back to the NCBI, sorry, NCBI Pi. The last thing that I didn't deal with is the database. And uh, we could put, say, okay, database and uh, still do the same thing. Okay, so that, that would be fine. Okay, let me run the program. Now I need to provide here uh, and if, I, if I run the program, it will complain that it doesn't know what to do with this protein. I, I have to provide database protein. Okay, and it, it now it works. Okay, downloading three cats. Fine. But I think I can improve it by saying that I don't want this name database. Uh, I would like to have a flag called protein instead of saying database is protein and then a flag called nucleotide okay so this one will, won't work of, of course because unrecognized argument protein but i could say i would like and i'm going to copy paste this one as well so i can keep the old one i can say okay i am expecting protein as the value here i won't have the I won't need the help. I could put it in the, the database. Uh, but I know that this needs to be also either true or false, right? Uh, at this point, I don't need the, the value there. So it's action true or false. And then the code here hmm, is going to be complex, more complex. So maybe it's not, not the right solution. Uh, let me let, let me comment this whole thing out now, so I can show you at least the the part I wanted to show. Okay, so it won't be a, a 
In this case, it won't be a better solution, so I'm not really going to implement, uh, keep it, but uh, uh, I would like to show you. So now I can run this program this way, and it will be fine. Okay, it accepts it. But I would like to be able to also have a nucleotide. Nucleotide. I think I spelled it correctly. And I can still run this, but I can also add nucleotide. And it will still accept it, and it sort of will run it. Okay, the rest of the code I commented out because I need to do, do some work there and it's probably not worth it. But here, what we wanted is actually that the user provides either protein or nucleotide, but not both of them. But one, at least one of them is required. Oh, sorry, exactly one of them is required. Why I'm saying exactly? Because if we had a third one, then it would say we want one and not two and not three. Okay, so that's why we think exactly one. In, in the case of two, it's either or, so same thing. We can do this with this. It's called ArcBar XOR. XOR is a programming term that we haven't heard yet. It basically says exclusive or, meaning this is or this, or this, or this, but exactly one of them. Okay, normally if you say or this, or this, or this, then in programming terms at least, it can be that all of them is, is there, okay? So, uh, the, 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 the right person has to be, uh, I don't know. What, 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 uh, yeah. the, the, okay, the good code is, uh, um, or, Okay, let's go with the cars. Okay, it's standard car, car example. A good car is fast or big or, I don't know, cheap. Okay, that's a good car. It's, it's, it, it's okay if the, all three, right? You don't have to be just one of them. That's normal or. And so you can have more of them and still okay. Uh, not exactly the way probably normal people speak, but that's how program, programming works. So or means at least one of them, but can be more. True. XOR means exactly one is true. So it can't be both true. And this is our case. So we can have this extra thingy added here. And um, in this case, I called it action, that was the, the, the example, but in our case, we can actually call it database because that's what we are selecting. And then here we have protein and nucleotide. I don't need these ones now. So I'm commenting out so you will have them. So now if I run them, again, the program, it will say you can't have nucleotide when, when you have protein. What is protein? Protein. Same problem. Okay. What if I put the nucleotide at the beginning? properly typed, okay? Same problem, okay? The different order of the complaint because the different order it noticed it. But I can provide one of them, okay? So I say protein, this is fine, but I, and also would be nucleotide. If I remove this one as well, then it will say, okay, we need at least one of them either protein or nucleotide. And it's now nice because it's actually telling me what exactly, what are the options, okay? Uh, the drawback sort of, of this implementation in our case is that we don't have the, the word of the database, the name of the database uh, right here and in, the, in, the, in the argument. So we'll have to 
add some extra code to do this or 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 or, or that. Uh, so in our case, it's not really the 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 right way to do, to do this. But uh, uh, so that's why I'm going to replace this one and allow this one or comment out these ones, and then I can. Hello, the code again. Okay, so to make it work, let's see if it works. I think uh, we didn't provide the database and we didn't set it as a required. Required. True. Okay, so I think the, we got this error, this nasty, strange error, because we didn't have a database. And we didn't have a database because I forgot to add it, but it also because the program didn't require it. So database protein. And now it's happy. Okay, so here we are. This is a working version. Uh, this could be nice in some cases. I just wanted to show you. In our case, it's probably not that nice. Uh, and some more helpers here. Okay, before we go, uh, CP and CBI, actually, CP and CBI, and it's called NCBI ARC parse. Okay, so I copied this one as well. And um, that's it now, way longer than I expected, 11. Uh, so we'll have 10 minutes break uh, and then we get back uh, to the next video.